All right, let's explore some more options here. We're going to talk about masking. If you hold control, you see that temporarily the brush will change to the mask pen. If you draw on the mesh, you'll see you draw out this gray area, which is a mask. And nothing I do currently will be affected within that mask. So let's say I just draw something here with the standard brush. You see the mask remains unchanged. You can create some quite interesting effect uh, with masking. So we also have some other masking uh, brushes. So B, M, let's see we have mask circle, mask curve, pen, lasso, all these things. Let's try this circle. Just this, okay, now this will be the active masking brush, okay. So for this, I'm gonna turn off uh, perspective currently. So now we're more in a orthographic uh, viewpoint. I'm gonna make sure, uh, yeah, symmetry is active. And then um, hold control, and I can start drawing out that circle. It's gonna be a little tricky to get that placed uh, just right. But if I just start drawing it out, and then I tap and hold a uh, space bar, I can move that circle and just be a little bit more. Whenever I let go of space bar, I can change again the size. Just like get that perfectly placed where I want it and then let go of the pen and the mask will be created right there. Let's just make sure we're on, uh, yeah, we're on the highest subdivision level. So that's looking good. If you go under the masking menu here, we also have a little menu here to control the masking. We can turn this off for view the mask. We actually have the mask here currently. If I do something here, you'll see that nothing will happen within that region. It's just that we can't view the mask. But I'm gonna click that on. Here we can blur the mask slightly if you wanna have a more gradual fall off or sharpen kind of a medium there, like blur it and sharpening it again seem to work quite fine. And then I'm gonna inverse it or you can control tap to the side here. That's the hotkey to inverse. And here you can also clear the mask and the hotkey for that will be control and just drag a selection marquee to the side. Let me undo that. So now, yeah, let me just use for instance, yeah, for simplicity, it's just the standard brush here and I'll hold alt and carefully just, let me just nudge that in a little bit. Smooth that out, something like that. Press P again to get perspective back and then control, do that selection marquee and the mask is gone. So that's also a way to alter and be kind of specific about the changes you want to make to uh, the surface. Let's look at another example here. I'm gonna use the mask lasso. Let's try to uh, mask out this whole region. Now, of course, we could just start off with, let's say, the mask pen initially and just start drawing that out and be very careful with it. But it would be maybe a little bit more precise if we use the mask uh, lasso. So we just start. I'm going to be a bit careful here and just. Okay, I'm going to also turn off perspective for this one. Just hold shift, make sure I'm snapping to that ortho orthographic view and just kind of follow this. Uh, light. Whoops, <laughs> a bit tricky, but uh, also good practice to get used to uh, the tablet. We draw that first and we can continue adding onto the mask just not letting go of alt, I'm sorry, of control. And if I wanna remove from the mask, I can hold control and alt, and they'll actually subtract from the mask. So you, you can see that little indicator says plus mask and minus when I press alt. So there we go, it's kind of decent. So let's see what we can do with this. We could, uh, first of all, I'm gonna invert the mask again. So control click. And we also have some global deformations here. So I have under the tool palette, we have deformation, the deformation tab here. 
we can do a lot of things uh, for this. Let's just try to, yeah, we can do, um, yeah, shrink it a bit, something like that. All right, interesting. Just do a very subtle. Uh, you can also enter these values uh, numerically. So you see right there if you want a very precise little number. But anyways, I'm just gonna be happy with that. So and then clear the mask, and there we go. But before I clear the mask though, Let's try some other features here. So, all right, so we have all of these uh, settings. Uh, see what else here. So noise, we could add some general noise pattern, for instance, that will only affect this region. Uh, we do have, let me undo that. We also have some more settings for uh, a little noise generator here, kind of surface noise. I'm just gonna mention this guy. It's an interesting uh, tool. So currently we don't have UVs on this object and a lot of these settings will sometimes work more predictably with uh, if you have carefully laid out UVs and you can bake, uh, or I'm sorry, make the projection based on the UVs. In this case, it's gonna be a 3D projection and that's fine for something just like a general noise pattern. But if, you, if we wanted to have some like a grid pattern or something like that, chances are we'd be better off with a UV uh, for that. But anyways, so we have a noise scale. You see, we can make a very large uh, noise pattern and just uh, turn that strength down or up. Let's see. It's very kind of just to have some visual interest there, whatever it is that we're doing. Um, yeah, but it, it, this can create for some really fast and, and interesting uh, just surface variation. So anyways, I'm gonna just leave it at that. I just really wanted to mention that really quickly. You also have a noise plugin here. You can click and play around with, and you even have some more uh, procedurally based uh, patterns there. Anyways. So, but once you set this, uh, there is one more step we'll have to go through. So hit okay. And currently it seems like it's applied to the surface and everything's okay, but there's one uh, last step to do. So currently this is just a preview and you would have to hit apply to mesh. Once I do that, now it's going to bake that down to the mesh and there we go. You see the surface noise generator is no longer active and what we're looking at here is just the our mesh at the highest subdivision level. So I can now control and drag to the side, clear the mask. Now we have that little interesting difference here in surface uh, variation. So I can press P again to have my perspective back and kind of see where we're getting at with this. So maybe this is some kind of metal skull or something underneath which is being revealed and this could be some more, um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not being very thoughtful with this uh, uh, concept, but it looks like this could be some more flexible material of some synthetic sort over some sort of skill, uh, internal structure. So, um, masking, different masking options, and some global deformation, and the surface uh, noise generator, which is a very useful little feature. Let's look at the fold brush, BFO. And for, for this, uh, we're gonna talk about another little feature here called Morph Target. So I'm just throwing some information your way now to just get introduced to these really quickly, but uh, this will make sense. You just store a Morph Target. Essentially, it stores the current version of this mesh in memory. So now I can make changes to the mesh. So let's try the fold brush. The fold brush, as you'll see, it's kind of like a, as the name suggests, let me lower the C intensity, kind of imitates folding in, in clothing or, or fabric. So I add some, some, some folds here. So you see we have that lacy mouse uh, activated on this brush. See that by that red line. 
All right, so here, here's my point. So the reason we store a morph target is that if I use the smooth brush here, which I would usually do just to kind of uh, make that not so pronounced and kind of make that more gradual fall off so we just have that nice little fold pattern at the end there as the fabric is being kind of stretched right there. Um, but the problem obviously is that I'm, I'm erasing my tertiary details there, the pores and all that detail that I spent time sculpting. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to use the smooth brush in this case, but I do want to make these folds a little bit more uh, subtle. So I stored the morph target, which means that version before we started doing anything is still stored in memory. So we're, we can use a brush now called a morph brush, so B-M-O. The morph brush will morph back to this morph target when I start sculpting. I can just do a low C intensity, just gradually do that. And we'll have a very, very similar effect as the smooth brush did. It's kind of just erasing those folds, but it, you see it's not erasing my detail because it's stored in the morph target. So I'm just, I'm just kind of erasing back to the morph target. And now you see I have more subtle little uh, folds right there. Let's add some more. So the morph target is still there, so we can just keep working on this. On this uh, mesh. So it's a very liberating uh, feature because you can just keep adding tertiary details and try things out without worrying too much that you're going to. destroy your detail because you can always just erase back to that stored morph target. There we go, we're getting kind of an interesting subtle uh, look here. Some sort of more elastic material seems to be a bit more stretched. Just a bit more pronounced fold right there and BMO. that and symmetry is active so you get the idea um, and then when we're happy just delete morph target and this is now our new mesh and the morph brush has no function anymore because there is no morph target currently stored